All right, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a glass material for blender cycles. So we're gonna be going with a pretty realistic setup. Uh, it's not totally realistic. We're going to be uh, going with sort of a sped up version. Uh, so it'll render quite a bit faster. Uh, we're going to be using a mix of glossy and refractive shaders to get the look we want. Some people like to add in uh, volumetric scattering shader. It just helps the light diffuse through the glass a little bit more, uh, makes it look a little bit more realistic. Uh, it doesn't change uh, the look enough really for me. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, render time is a valuable resource to me. I only have my laptop that's really capable of doing very much work. Uh, so uh, I decided not to include that. Um, I've used this material in a video you might have seen recently, so obviously that's a lot of rendering that needs to be done, and I decided to go with uh, the faster option. It still looks great, and I think it works perfectly. So I'm going to be showing you my setup for that. All right, so I've got just a basic setup here. I've got uh, my cut model from the video, and just in a studio scene. And so I've got it selected, got the viewport all set up. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new material, and I'm just going to call it glass. That works. And I'm going to delete the diffuse. Then I'm going to add a refraction shader and a glossy shader and a mixed shader. All right, and the refraction has to go on top and the gloss, glossy on the bottom. All right, so that's looking pretty terrible right now. So uh, you can probably guess refraction refracts light, glossy uh, reflects light. Um, and so uh, if we just change this value here, uh, we get something that looks pretty good, but it actually doesn't properly mimic the behavior of glass. So what we need to do is we need to add a Fresnel node. There we go, that looks great. So what the Fresnel node does is it uh, does some ca calculation I don't understand fully, but basically what it does is it takes the index of refraction value, that's the IOR here, and then it uh, takes the normal value of the viewport and different lighting variables and stuff like that. And it uh, calculates when the light is going to be reflecting off of or refracting through a given surface. So that's exactly what we want for this type of thing. If you're doing a water shade or a glass shade or something like that, this is the node you want to help uh, define the factor for your mix shader. All right, and since we're going for an acrylic glass look, I happen to know the index of refraction for that is 1.49. All right, and the reason I know this is because I looked it up on the Wikipedia. Uh, there's a index of all different kinds of materials. Um, if you just Google it, you should find it pretty easily. Um, just uh, measurements people have done of real life objects to determine uh, these values for use in 3D rendering. Better change it here as well, 1.49. And so uh, I just always go to that page on Wikipedia if I'm creating a material like this and I need to figure out what this value is for what I'm trying to mimic, then uh, this just helps me get it spot on and it really improves the look of the material. All right, so down to the refraction. Uh, this is just the algorithm that's being used. We can go with Sharp, Beckman, or GGX. I don't understand exactly how they all work, uh, but just using the default should be fine. The differences between them are very small. Uh, Blender Guru actually talks about them in his uh, Encyclopedia of Cycles Materials. So if you really want to know the difference between all these, there is... Uh, slight differences in the way they look. They're basically the same thing, but if you want more details, you can go to that page. Uh, it's a Blender Guru is a very smart guy. Uh, definitely recommend any of his tutorials, really. So, uh, moving on. The roughness value here. Um, 
I'll just show you what this does. You can see right now we've got a pretty clear looking glass. Refractions are coming through very sharply. If we increase this, it'll make our glass look foggier. See? So it looks like frosted glass now. That's not really what we want. We're going for a clear glass. So I'm just going to set this to uh, 0.01. The reason I'm not setting it to zero is because I never want to do, or uh, sorry, very rarely do I want to do uh, absolute values. Uh, if I'm choosing a color, roughness value, whatever, I don't want to do absolute values uh, because having a little imperfection in your scene will actually help uh, improve the realism. In nature, you're not going to find a, an absolute black or an absolute white color anywhere. So um, just going with that sort of philosophy, we're not going to use uh, absolute values. Uh, and then glossy roughness value is similar. The lower this is, the clearer your reflections are going to be. And then the higher it is, the f more blurred they're going to be. So it's going to make your surface look rougher. So uh, for this type of glass, we also want this value pretty low. I think I'm just going to set it to the same as the reflect refraction uh, shader. It looks pretty good. You can actually notice a pretty big difference on the rim if I start increasing this here. You can see it's starting to get a lot more diffused here. So even just a small change at this value, um, if you have a sharp eye, you'll start to notice the difference. So I am going to keep this, uh, let's do 0.025. That looks pretty good. All right. All right, now let's talk about the color. I've actually got a picture to show you guys. It's not very high resolution, but it works to illustrate what I'm talking about. So most people think of glass as being just a transparent uh, material. It's not really any color. Uh, it's the color of whatever's reflecting off of it and refracting through it. So actually, that's not entirely true. If you look in a mirror, you'll notice there's a slight green tint. Or if you look here on the edges, you can especially see it. The grass, or uh, sorry, glass is actually tinted green. It changes the color of whatever light is passing through it. And obviously, you can see it better at more acute angles. So we're going to mimic this behavior. If I look at the uh, color value for the refraction shader right now, you can see it's perfectly even. It's just straight gray, 0.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to HSV. That's hue saturation value as opposed to RGB, which is red, green, blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to as green as you can get up here. And you can see that's pretty green. It looks like a beer bottle or something. And then um, the reason I changed to HSB is because I can change the intensity of the greenness of the bottle without uh, changing, you know, actually how green it is compared to the red and blue values, which would be impossible in RGB format. So I'm just going to decrease this. Still not looking a little green. All right. Maybe increase it a little more. That's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can get a different view here. Maybe a little closer, a little more cute angle so we can get what we're going for here. I'm gonna let's see. Just decrease this in small amounts. You always have to tinker with this type of thing to, you know, get exactly what you're going for. Gonna actually go back up a little bit. All right, that looks good to me. All right, and then I'm going to go to the glossy shader. 
and I'm actually going to copy the exact color I used for the refraction shader. There we go. All right, and that's the whole setup. You'll notice that there are some fireflies. Well, maybe you guys can't see it, but there are some fireflies here in the viewport. That's just because this is only at uh, 20 cycles in the viewport. So once you pump up the cycles, uh, around about 150, uh, is when the fireflies start disappearing. So um, anything above that, usually I go about 500 for these types of renders that are really realistic. Um, that'll definitely remove those fireflies so you won't see them anymore. All right, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, let me know what you guys want to learn next or if you want to see me you know, make something in Blender, I don't know. Uh, just leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks for watching.